What's up, Ozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to some more FNAF news. So today we are talking about something completely different from the security breach malarkey that's going on right now. We're getting away from the Fazbear Fries books and going to the Ultimate Guide. Uh, the the what's it called? The Five Nights at Freddy's Ultimate Guide, which is coming out in January, January the sixth, I believe, of 2022. Um, which is actually kind of close. So it'll be after Security Breach, of course, um, but Security Breach isn't actually featured in it, which is what we're gonna go through today. We're gonna go through kind of what's gonna be in this book, what you're going to expect, and there's gonna be some deep lore, which we're gonna talk about near the end. So if you enjoy this video, make sure you like it and you subscribe for more kind of FNAF news like this and theory videos. I still do theory videos as well. Uh, I've got a cool theory series coming soon. That sounds very weird. Theory series? That's cool. I should name a series just theory series. <laughs> anyway, let's get straight into this. So basically we've got a preview of some of the pages and it looks a lot like the other guides and it covers a lot of the same things as the other guides. Um, but I think I think it looks like a little bit nicer. Um, I guess it, the, they formatted it so that it's um, they fit they f they fitted in a lot more in a lot less space. So we got a table of contents and this is really, really cool that we've got this because now we can see what's going to be in the book. So chapter one is Five Nights at Freddy's uh, and that is 10 pages long. Uh, chapter two is Five Nights at Freddy's two and that is, my God, my eyes are not letting me see the small numbers. Uh, 14 pages long, so chapter so chapter two is longer than chapter one, which you'd expect. FNAF two is a bigger game than FNAF one, uh, more kind of secrets, more animatronics, more mechanics. Um, chapter three is about Five Nights at Freddy's three, of course, 16 pages long. So I wouldn't expect that really. I guess there's more mini games and more lore in, in FNAF three, so that's gonna be kind of interesting for them to go through again. Uh, I am hoping that this book will cover kind of lore aspects um, because that would be that'd be kind of cool. Um, we have had that in the past, but hopefully they will kind of lead us more to a few theories and that could come in the Fast Breath Right section as well. Five Nights at Freddy's 4 is chapter 4 and that is 12 pages long, which is weird. So, so for some reason FNAF 3 has more pages than FNAF 4. Um, and I'm not sure how I feel about that because FNAF 4 is very unsolved right now. Um, you have a whole spectrum of people um, who believe different things about FNAF 4 and that's uh, that needs to be cleared up. It, it's, it's unfortunate that we've got so little pages on FNAF 4 but um, hopefully we'll still get some, some cool information about that. Um, Sister Location is interestingly 18 pages long. No, it's not. 16 pages. I can't do math. Then we've got Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator, which is 22. Um, Ultimate Custom Night, which is 20. I'm doing all of this math in my head. Help Wanted is strangely 30 pages long. I guess that makes sense because there's so many mini games and there's a lot of secrets and there's a lot of collectible items and quite a lot of lore as well. So um, hopefully... They will go through that well. Uh, and then the next thing is Curse of Dreadbear, which which is cool. They're gonna go through the whole DLC. Um, that's 20 pages long. Uh, and then we've got Special Delivery, which I expected them to cover because it's literally on the cover. Yeah, we did really, we never really talked about that. How they changed from, what was it before? I forgot what the original cover was, but they changed from a normal animatronic to a FNAF AR animatronic, to, um, to Frostbear Freddy or whatever he's called. Freddy, Freddy Frostbear. <laughs> I sounded like a boomer for a second there. So yeah, special delivery is coming in. I don't know how much they're going to be able to do on that, but they say that they're able to do 14 pages on it. Um, so yeah, that's cool, I guess. Um, <laughs> and then strangely, it moves on to chapter 11, the books. And that is 12 pages long. So I'm assuming that it's talking about the original trilogy uh, because the next chapter is Fazbear Frights, which is 38 pages long. 
that is exciting to me because of course there's 33 stories there's a whole stitch wraith um, so does that mean that each page is going to be a little summary of each story or is that just going to mean that we're going to get some kind of brief outline of the Stitch Wraith story with the stories that are canon in the Stitch Wraith timeline kind of described as, as the timeline goes on. That would be very cool if, if we got like a timeline of the Stitch Wraith or the timeline of the Stitch Wraith universe. Um, I would really like that. Um, but it would be also cool if they went through every story, uh, just a little summary and a few theories. Um, I would like that. Um, we're going to skip uh, chapter 13 for now. Um, we're going to move on to chapter 14, which is the last chapter. Uh, we don't know how many pages it is, because it's the last chapter, you can't tell. Um, but uh, it's an animatronics inventory, so I guess it's just going to go through a ton of animatronics. Um, and be like, this is this person, this is this person. Is there going to be some sort of kind of broken chica or spring trap glitching out or uh, or uh what's it, what's she called scrap baby is there going to be a preview for um or a teaser for the, the next game or the next sort of thing that comes out i don't know i really don't it's really difficult to say because as much as i would love there to be a new teaser what can they really do? Because Security Breach is literally releasing like uh, two, three weeks before this uh, this book is coming out. So really, people will still be talking about Security Breach. And if we have another image for the, like the next game, then when is that game going to be coming? It's going to be coming in like another three years, probably. So I don't know if they would do that or not, but it seems very cool. But also, I think it's good to point out that there probably won't be that much lore um, hidden around there and hidden around the, the start of the book because there's chapter 13 and chapter 13 I am stressing chapter 13 is Fazbear Entertainment Archives now we talked about this um, when the original description for the book came out basically the Fazbear Entertainment Archives are things that were taken way way from way bit way back um, what they're going to do is they're going to dig up some of the things that were that were in the original locations at the in the original games, and they're going to show them to us, and they're going to give us clues to the lore. I hope that is true. I I really do hope that's true. I know I've talked to Underscore quite a uh, quite a lot about this. Um, he's made a video on it, and the big thing to point out here is that the first bear entertainment archives is not just a name that popped out of nowhere really the fazbear entertainment archives are what brought us freddy and friends on tour if you look in the description of the uh, of the videos it says that they were brought from the fazbear entertainment archives so obviously these freddy and friends episodes were made um made for children um way back in the 1980s, they were literally showing it on the television, uh, maybe showing it in Freddy's. When they put it in the archives, they took it out uh, in in the present day um, for the security breach or whatever, and it's getting corrupted by Afton. Um, that's kind of the law of Freddy and Friends on tour, but that was dug up from the Fazbear Entertainment Archives. So we're going to get things like that, so old kind of things, uh, I guess artifacts from the past, in this book, we're gonna get some kind of lore, and I'm super excited for it. I'm all for it, I'm all for it, I really am. Let's move on to uh, the two pages that were given to us, uh, or at least the two pages that I've got. I'm, there might be other pages out there already, but I can only see two. So we got a whole page about secret animatronics. It seems to be a FNAF 2 page, uh, Golden Freddy. There's nothing really out of the ordinary here. All of them just kind of go through who they are, um, what they do, uh, <laughs> it gives you their life st story basically, and of course how to get rid of them. Um, yeah, it, it's 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 nothing special. We're not going to get special things basically for the first like three quarters of this book, I don't think. And then we move on to another one, 
Um, it seems like this one um, could point to the fact that there might be a little bit of lore clues hidden. Um, so, it's me. Another mystery that's kept the fandom talking. It's actually telling us a lot about It's Me. I'm, I'm very surprised about how much it's telling me. Um, or telling us, sorry. It says that it, it, it's used by various animatronics at various different points, and yeah, that's true. As you can see in the pictures, it's used by Golden Freddy, it's used by Foxy, and it's it's talked about um, how it was in The Curse of Dread Bear. Johnny Blocks found the Easter egg, remember? Um, it's a Silver Eyes novel. Um, where it's me is used for the souls of the missing children or whatever. It's it's kind of it, it it gives us a very good description of where you'll find different things, and I think this is genuinely quite a good book, um, showing us all the dis different aspects of FNAF, um, so that we can kind of piece things together. And then we have one about Mike Schmidt um, with the paycheck, of course. Many have speculated that Mike isn't just some security guard off the street. Yeah, sorry, if they're tampering with the animatronics AI, referring to Custom Night, which could imply that Mike has knowledge of the animatronics. So, Mike has animatronics, uh, Mike has experience with the animatronics. That's something that they've kind of directly pointed out, it's, that's risen to the surface here, and was put in the book. Why would that be put in the book unless it's kind of true? And yeah, Mike was tampering with the AI, and how does he know to tamper with the AI unless there was some kind of... I don't know, I don't know. It's possible that's confirmation that sister location is before all of this, but I don't think it is. So, I don't know what that means. Maybe you guys talk about it in the comments. Fans have also pointed out that he shares a first name with Mike from FNAF 4. Mike from FNAF 4? Yeah, that's, that's a weird line. Mike from FNAF 4. There was no Mike in FNAF 4. What are they talking about? Yeah, it, it's, 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 that's strange to me. There's no Mike in FNAF 4, I'm pretty sure. I, unless I'm being really dumb. And so it's possible that that means that that's confirmation of Mike being the protagonist of FNAF 4. Uh, it doesn't really help the case though because people could also put the mic label to the crying child so we should probably not talk about that. Michael Afton and Mike the name of the, of the survival logbook so yeah um, that's quite a nice summary of who Mike Schmidt is um, but yeah that, that's all really uh, that I've got right now. If there are other pages please send them to me and I will make a video looking at them as well. Um, but those are the three that I have got currently. So, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, and make sure you subscribe uh, so that you can see more FNAF news when it comes out. Security Breach is on its way. This is so exciting. Make sure that you play. <laughs> I will see you in another video. Goodbye.